Welcome back, CSE 121, to our EX21 series of A through D. And this is our second one, B or second one. And this is called a sum of negative numbers. I'll click on it right here so I can see the full name. It's called EX2 sum of negative numbers. And here's the instructions. And this one started, so there's some there's some code here in your in your classroom. And remember, if you have to change anything, you can go over here so that if you want to change your indent size, if you want to put it at four, I like to have it at four. If you want to change your font size, if you want to work in your dark theme, you know, and work like that, you can work in your dark theme. I have it on, on a light theme right now. So whatever you do, you could change that in there and then just click on these little dots again. And if you need to go back to the classroom for whatever reason, you could go back there. So if you had started it, you could go back here. So I'll go back in here and these are my instructions it's called a sum of negative numbers so that means we're going to sum up negative numbers so if you see this list here there's a list called nums and it's already up here and it starts at negative seven and it goes all the way to zero and then starts counting up with positive numbers up to four now the sum of the negative numbers is really going to sum these up so don't do this you could easily make a new list called neg nums and just put these nums in there now th that's easy enough to do but what i want you to do is pull out the negative numbers using a conditional so don't just make neg nums make neg nums nothing and then use some code to do it so when you go here we're going to do neg nums we'll make a list called neg nums and we'll make it blank to start or empty and then we're going to add numbers to that list we're going to append from here by making sure we find all the numbers that are less than zero. So, I mean, that's not that hard to do, but instead of just making a list and just copying these numbers and putting them in there, let's at least do that. So it says using a for loop, append only the negative numbers. So that should be pretty easy. So I'm gonna make a for loop. So I'm gonna say for i in nums, we can just cycle right through nums. We don't have to do a range or anything like that. We can cycle right through nums and then we could use a conditional and we could say if and if we say if i is less than zero, because that would mean it would be a negative number, then we're going to append it. So we're going to append it to our new list. Our new list is neg nums. So we're going to add it to neg nums, and we're going to put neg nums, and say dot append. And what we're going to append is going to be i. So as long as it is less than zero, it should be, as long as it's less than zero, it should be appended to that list. And we could print out the neg nums list. So I could go here and move back to the margin and print out neg nums. So we could do that first. So what we should have first is just the negative numbers in there. It should be negative seven through negative one should be the only numbers in that list. So if we do that, there it is. So that works. Now we just have to add these up. Now they're not, a, it's not a really big list, but you know, keep in mind if you had a list of all kinds of numbers that weren't in the same order, you know, that's why I don't want you to just kind of cheat and say, oh, I'll just highlight these. What if you had, you know, thousands of numbers and they're, and you had to find the negative numbers and things like that. You were kind of crunching through some data. So keep in mind, we're just using a very simple example, but if it was more complex, this would help us a lot more. So now what we're going to do is now that we have them, we're going to add them up and find out the average of these numbers. And then we're, we're also going to get the sum of these numbers. So we could do the sum first, and that is a function, a sum function. And we're going to do, we're just going to print it out. So we're going to print out the sum of neg nums. And that's easy enough. And there's neg nums right there. So we could just print out the sum. And it should be like, let's see, 13 and 5 is 18. And 4 is 22. And 3 is 25. And 3 is, it should be 28. It should be negative 28. So let's just see if that works. Yeah, it's negative 28, so that's right. So that's easy enough. And then we're gonna print out the average of those numbers. So to get the average, this is a little different. We're gonna to have to not only use the sum, which is 28, but then average up how many there are, which would be the length of our new list. So that's easy enough. So we're just gonna make a variable called average and have it set to the sum of this. We could just use this right here and put that there, the sum of neg nums divide it by, with a forward slash, the len, which is the length. That means how many numbers are in that list. So this list, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, divided by seven. So it's gonna be the length, whatever that is, and it just happens to be seven. So we're gonna put the length of neg nums. And we don't have to print out the, the length. We'll just assume if, if this is 28 and then there's seven, I guess the average should be four. 
even without doing this, but let's see if that kind of works out. So we're just going to print average, and let's run it. And it's negative 4, so that works out. So that's working okay. So again, these are just little kind of reviews of some of these things, of for loops, of conditionals, of lists, of appending. We're using the length, we're using sum, so that was pretty easy. So again, that was the sum of negative numbers, and again, I'll give you something a little more challenging as we get used to the Replit classroom, but for now, that was just a little review of, of lists and some of the things we could do the list. The next two exercises will get a little more challenging than these, so these are kind of little warm-ups. So remember, once you're done, remember to go hit Submit, and then it'll tell you that it's submitted. And one other thing I want to point out here, that I didn't point out in the first video, that if you export it here, it'll copy it into your, you know, because if you're in this classroom, you might think, well, what if you didn't get it? What if you didn't get it submitted? If you just do this, you could just export it, and it'll put this right into your Repel account as, an, as a regular replit. So if you just did this, it'll just put it in there. It'll even take you back in here. And that way you just have a regular one, just like you used to do and just like you used to share it and stuff like that. But that way you have kind of a backup. So with both of these, you can do that as well. You could just copy it in there. That way you have backups in there as this, and you also have them in there as part of the classroom. So you have, you have kind of have your own copy, and you have your version that was part of the classroom. So that, you know, once you're done with this class, you still have copies of these exercises. So I'd recommend you doing that as well. So, so that's our second one. And then I'll do some quick videos on these other ones, but I'll, I'll put these up first just to get you started with these exercises using lists and using the Replit Classroom.